and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this image in front of me. Uh, it's this cool curve effect. Uh, it comprises of several elements from the background uh, to this effect that we create with a brush and then the cutout text as well. All right, so I'm going to crack on now because this uh, may take a little while so I may have to split it into two videos. If it does obviously I'll link it to the next video at the end of this one and I'll include it in the description on the side. So first of all, you want to go to File New, Control N or the Option key N on a PC or Mac, and the width needs to be 1,440 by height of 900. You can play around with these, obviously, but these ones work quite well. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit for you. I uh, need to unlock the background. There we go. And first of all, you need to hit U on your keyboard or click on the rectangular tool down here, and then drag out a rectangular block about that big doesn't really matter specifically. Um, just make sure that the colour is black. Uh, after you've done that, go to Edit, Transform Path, and Skew, and drag the top left down a little bit, and you'll see this. Uh, these numbers here are changing. Just send it to negative 50, and do the same with the bottom here. You drag either drag it up to you get to negative 50, uh, like that, or it does it itself. Okay, and hit OK. Then when you're done with that, go to Layer, Rasterize, Shape, and then go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and then call it whatever you want. Sorry, I'm going through this a bit quick, but I want to try and get this into one video if possible. And there we go. Then hit B on your keyboard, or click on the Brush tool. Click on Brushes. Go down to the bottom, and you'll see your new brush here. Okay, and we're just going to delete that one, so just grab it with the Move tool. Delete, go back under your brushes, make sure that's selected again. And then hit uh, can either F5 or function uh, F5 on your keyboard or Mac, on your PC or Mac even. Uh, this will open up the brushes panel. So click on brush, tip and shape, the top one there. Make sure spacing is ticked and drag the slider all the way up to 1000%. Click on shape dynamics and then the following settings you need to use for this are... Dun -dun -dun, uh, size jitter needs to be set to 20%, the pen pressure uh, uh, control needs to be set to pen pressure even, minimum diameter set to 50, uh, angle jitter to 0, pen t uh, tilt needs to be set to uh, second control down, 100% roundness jitter and 1% on minimum roundness at the bottom. Uh, then click on scattering. Uh, for scattering you need to have both axes ticked, 33% uh, selected, control set to off on both, uh, count needs to be set to 9 and count jitter to 0%. You then need to f go down to other dynamics, which is the last one, and make sure opacity jitter is set to 0%, uh, control is set to off, flow jitter to 100% and pen pressure is selected in the next control. Uh, also just tick on w uh, wet edges and then close that down by clicking on that. Make sure your brush tool is selected again and make a new layer. On this layer, you're just going to go to Layer, Layer Styles, and Gradient Overlay quickly. And I'm just going to select this one that I've pre made. I'll read out the colors quickly for you. They are the red is uh, FF0000, it's two Fs, four zeros. The yellow, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. The yellow is FFFF00, 4Fs, 2 zeros. And the green is 087608. And the cyan at the end is 00FFFF20, 4Fs. When we've done that, click OK. We're also going to add a drop shadow. Um, so, drop shadow, we need to add. Uh, blend mode needs to be set to darker colour and obviously set to black, opacity set to 80%, angle to 120, use global lighting selected, distance set to naught, spread to naught, size to 2, uh, that's all that for that one, uh, inner shadow needs to be set to, um, which we have it on, um, yeah, multiply, uh, white, uh, opacity can be set to 100%, angle is 120 still, use global lighting is ticked, and then distance needs to be 1, choke is 0, and size is 1. And when that is all done, hit OK. With the brush tool selected now, if you literally just 
click it a few times, you'll get this. Now it's actually a bit too big this brush, so it's going to do that. And I'm just going to make the brush a little bit smaller. And just click it a few times where you want the effect to be. There we go. So once you're happy with you know your few lines, um, go up to Edit, trans uh, Free Transform, or Control T, Option T, on your Mac or keyboard, and then just tilt on the side and stretch it. Okay, so that would pretty much do it. Get it to about there. So you so you've got the edges coming. So it's going off the page and hit OK. And obviously, if you move that about a bit, you still got all the colours there. You can still play around. Then what you need to do is you need to go up to edit and then go to transform and warp and you're just dragging these sectors here down a little bit pulling these ones up and in fact it's going to create a bulge there I'm going to drag this one up a bit more okay also you can play about with this until you get it exactly how you want it um, I'm just going to rush through this a little bit because I won't have enough time to show you all of it. Hit OK. In fact, I'm going to make mine a little bit thinner as well. Let's use the transform again. And also, I can go back and re warp that, or I can just go back, just keep undoing it, shrink it a bit before I warp it. There we go. Edit, transform, warp. Drag that down, drag that up a bit more. And as you can see, I could probably still make that a little bit smaller um, to get the effect just as how I want it. So I click OK, drag it down a little bit more. There we go, it's expanding across the page. We're just going to increase that slightly. OK, and drag it off there. Uh, click on your white layer down here and set the paint bucket tool which is G, fill it black then go to filter noise add noise and set the amount to 10 distribution uniform and make sure you definitely click monochromatic and hit OK <laughs> sorry and add a new layer set the blend mode to color uh, set the paint bucket to or set, bleh, click down it and go across to the gradient. We're going to use the same gradient we used uh, last time for the um, for the brush. So I'm just going to redo that quickly. Same colorings, so no need to change those if you've already got them entered in. Put that down a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to drag from the top corner to the bottom corner. And let's put that in. You can't really see it at the moment, so what we're going to do is we're going to just add a brightness contrast level. I'm going to put the brightness up a little bit, and now you can start to see it. Drop the contrast down a little bit, and also you can play about with these settings even more. You can probably, in fact, I think, might even add a hue saturation level. Maybe put the saturation up a little bit more. Maybe increase the lightness ever so slightly. Might be a bit too much. There we are. You just want something just it's just something to help with the background on it. And then finally the text. So you create a you know you don't even need to create a new layer, just select the text tool over at the side. And for this I've used um Cooper Standard. You don't have to use it but um it's it, I, that's the one that I found creates a nice round effect and goes well with it. Um so select Cooper Standard Black uh, set it to about two hundred and smooth um, and black even uh, and then drag out your box or just click and then type in whatever you want so I had curve last time so let's use that drag it into pretty much the position you want and then as you can see on this last one it almost looks like the word curve is actually curving with the image it's actually not um, I literally all I did was uh, control T or option key T drag it horizontal in fact, that could be made a bit bigger. 